Hi, welcome to Biohacking with Brittany, a podcast focused on holistic health, nutrition, biohacking, and more. I'm your host, Brittany Ford, registered holistic nutritionist and self-proclaimed biohacker. During the last 10 years, I've focused on healing my gut and hormonal issues through lifestyle changes, nutrition, and of course, biohacks. And now I teach others to do the same. I'm so excited you're joining me today. So let's dive right in. So welcome to today's episode. I am super excited about this episode because I had my DNA tested from a local company here in Vancouver in Canada. And I was just blown away by all the re- all of my results and the amount of detail and information it gave. Um, and luckily, I have the CEO, Louis Naherny, oh my gosh, um, on the podcast with me today. And she is going to basically dive into how she started this company and why. And we're actually going to go through my results live on the show for everyone to hear and really get an idea of what DNA testing can really do for you um, and how to really implement it in your health and make changes that can make you healthy today and in the long run as well. So welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Brittany. Delighted to be here and looking forward to going over your uh, lifestyle DNA results with you. Yes. Yeah, me too. So to begin, I would just love for you to break down how you started this company and why and your your journey really to where you are today. Great. Would be delighted to. So it's interesting. I got fascinated with genetics when we adopted identical twins 18 years ago uh, from Vietnam. And it was just so interesting to me how these identical little girls could be so different. And actually at age three was the first time when one of my girls asked me why she wasn't a boy. And I now have a son and a daughter. So one of my children is transgender. And so it just took me on this journey of studying genetics over many years. And then I had the opportunity. um, I had been really quite sick uh, for quite a while as a corporate executive. I've been going to doctors for several years, trying to deal with breathing and respiratory problems. I just couldn't get enough air. I was having a lot of uh, menstrual issues. That was difficult. Um, I had restless leg syndrome where your legs vibrate at night. And I was just tired all the time. And every doctor I went to had a different solution, wanted to put me on drugs. And really, I was finding no answers whatsoever. I happened to be um, at an event where uh, someone suggested I do DNA testing for my twins and this this new thing that looked at diet and fitness and lifestyle. And I thought, well, why wouldn't I do that given I've got adopted children? And I just never dreamed that it would give me the answer to these health problems that I'd been struggling with for years. And so what I learned when I got my DNA results back is I'm genetically weak in vitamin Bs. And I have been, and once I realized that and started just taking supplements, which I hadn't been doing, within a few weeks, all of the symptoms that I had been wrestling with, seeing respirologists, oncologists, um, uh, going to lots of different doctors were finally, it all just went away. And so it turns out genetically, my body needs just a lot of vitamin B in order to work properly. And then I learned a few other things that helped me balance my hormones, reduce some of the weight that I'd put on over the years. And of course, I learned lots about my kids as well. So it really changed my life. And uh, I became involved with this new startup company and uh, then had the opportunity to run it. And I thought I really want to be able to bring all of this information to the world, because if it can be that simple to solve my health problems, simply through finding out this data about myself, my very unique data, then how come we can't make that available for everybody? So that's been my journey over the last five years is to really take this information and to use DNA power. My company is a way to help people get insight into their unique blueprint so that they can live a happier and healthier life. Yeah, that's such a cool story with your twins. Wow. That was like, I just imagine how interesting that would have been to get those results back. 
Absolutely. I mean, the thing is, again, you learn so many different things as you've discovered in years, you know, 70 different areas. <clears throat> it was very clear. It's so funny. I have 18 year olds and they both don't have the alcohol gene. And of course, they fight that all the time. <laughs> but at least we can be aware of it. And, and being Asian, they have troubles with the lactose gene. And so and mm. and actually, very interestingly, we discovered that they have challenges um, with concussion, which we had discovered through them having had some accidents. And so we shifted up what programs they were involved in for sports just to really try and protect them. So the great thing is, you you know, when you do this, you learn about four or five pieces of information that are truly unique to your body that you should be really attentive to for really your lifetime. And so um, for, you know, for all of our family, we've been able to make those changes that I know um, now being in this business, I absolutely know that I will live longer and healthier 10 to 20 years just because of what I've learned on this journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's just so fascinating. And what I found really interesting was the diversity of things that or genes that you test for. So not only was it diet looking at things that I don't metabolize as well, but it was also brain health and hormones and my vitamins, nutrient levels, like all of these different things. Um, and that's just like, it blows my mind that you can actually look at that many genes for that such specific information like that. Like I had no idea you could really do that, to be honest. Well, and you know, and these are of course just a, a fraction of the genes that we can look at, but what's unique about what we try to do, uh, Brittany, is we look at the genes that you can do something about. So we don't look actually at rare disease or you don't learn scary information. You learn, can you process carbohydrates well or not based on your genetics? You know, and that's a really useful thing to know day to day when you're eating. And so what we've done is we've taken and, and looked through all of the studies and the research that have been done over the last 20 to 40 years on all of these different genes in our body and really focused on the ones that impact your day to day health. And so we feel if we can put that into your hands if you can keep your genes healthy on and support your body on day-to-day -day health, you actually don't have to worry about the chronic disease and the scary other things that might be wrong because your genes and your body want to do the right thing. And so what's, what's important to know is that DNA is actually not your destiny. It's your blueprint. And so if you can learn your blueprint, how your code is set up, you can work with that to have a very long and healthy life. And the great thing is that it actually the thing that you have control over and that regulates the genes is something called epigenetics. It's basically the switch that tells your genes what they're supposed to do. And epigenetics is simply your diet and your nutrition, your exercise, your sleep, stress, and environmental and toxic and other factors, as well as actually what you think. Um, how you're, you're, you know, what you think is actually a very important uh, piece of being healthy as well. And so the great thing is, it's hard to do everything right. You, you know, there's just so many diets out there. It's hard to know how to be healthy. Chronic disease is just, there's a tsunami of chronic disease <clears throat> that's impacting our planet. And we can help people find what are a few of the, the keys and the levers that you can use specifically for your body so that when you're managing your health day to day, you can stay super healthy. And so, yes, we test, we test a lot of things, um, but there's also lots we don't test because we know if we look after these, the, the rest in your body will look after itself. Yeah, absolutely. So what is the typical type of client or customer that you see come and purchase your test um, who is just looking for information? Like, is, is there a commonality that you see? Well, I have to say some of our, our best clients are people who are biohackers like you, Brittany, <laughs> because people are curious. They want the data. You know, we now have data available on our bodies. And if you think about it, there's so little information um, that is absolute that you can learn about you. You can do some blood tests, but that changes every time. Um, you can do a little bit with urine, you know, fecal and others, but it's very difficult to know something that's really very true about yourself. And that's the great thing about DNA. It's the foundational information and data to stay healthy. So people who love working with information like that and are curious about their health, those are, you know, great clients of ours. 
But I would say that the other group is people who are starting to not feel well and they're going, I don't know why I can't figure this out. I'm trying to be, you know, stay healthy or be healthy, or I'm starting to demonstrate some issues like, you know, hormone imbalances or starting to have stomach or digestive issues or feeling tired. And they'll come and say, is there, is there something in here I can learn that might give me some clues to solving the issues that I'm feeling? So I would say those are really kind of the two best clients. We, you know, the people that we see the most. I would say it's really great, though, for parents to do for their kids, because if you can figure out our kids who are exposed to so many things now, um, how to support them, uh, you know, that's what I love seeing the most. But I'd say biohackers and people who are starting to not feel all that great um, and, you know, just people in general who want to look after their health. Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So I'm curious, are there any surprises that you see frequently? Um because I'm sure you've seen so many results at this point from so many different people who have done this test, but has there been something that comes up again and again that you didn't really think was going to happen when you started this business or took over this business? Like whether it's like how many people are lactose intolerant or I don't know what, something about hormones. Like, is there anything that really like sticks out to you that you did not think was going to be as popular as it is? Well, interestingly, you raised the two that I would have just said, and in part because they showed up in your report too. Brittany. Yeah. <laughs> and so the thing that is really interesting is that we uh, is that pe um, the majority of people do not have lactose genes that di naturally digest lactose. So over seventy five percent of the population does not properly have those genes. And if you think that we were raised in a culture that was drink two glasses of milk every day, which was the culture I grew up in, and that dairy is such a huge part of our diet, that's really shocking. And we're, we have found that it's one of the leading contributors to inflammation and weight gain for people over time if you don't have the right genes to be able to break that down in your body. And I mean, there's a lot of um, things I could talk about about why we could get away with that previously. So in you know, in earlier generations, you could have dairy and it didn't have that impact on the body, but we lived a cleaner lifestyle. We had better gut bacteria. We had more of an outdoor life that was getting the exercise to be able to help our bodies manage and process it. And we just, our bodies are just too burdened now to be able to, to manage it. So we find lactose is really, really a big one. We also see that there is quite a bit happening on the hormones in terms of people's ability to manage the, you know, especially estrogen and for women. And that um, when we see that, you know, we can give clues to people on how they can manage their fertility in particular or PCOS or other um, issues just because our bodies are overlaying so many hormones that could affect, could affect it even more. So that would be, you know, a second area. Um, and then what we're trying to do is look at the carb protein fat balance because everybody's going, oh, you know, the, you know, if I was to ask you, what's the latest diet crazes, what would you say? Oh my gosh. Uh, most people think it's keto, but it's actually carnivore is like the very trendy thing right now, which is obviously very high in protein if you're talking about macros. Correct. Yes. And so when people say, oh, I'm going on a keto diet or I'm going to go on a carnivore diet. For me, I always say, well, it depends, you know, is that the right diet for you? Absolutely, it depends. I have seen some superb athletes and trainers who went on to keto diets and, and it always works for people for a period of time, but it absolutely decimated their body over the long term because they didn't have the right genes and it was creating damage actually to their organs and other things because they don't have the right genes to break down fat properly. And then you have people who've got great fat processing genes, and it's a wonderful diet for them. So whenever people talk about a diet to be on, I'm always say, well, that depends based on your genetics. And the, and the great thing is you can actually get insight into that now. So I'm always cautious for people as they think about going into a new program, get a bit more information about really what's right for you first. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So let's like segue to my results. I think this is a perfect opportunity. Um, so basically with the tests that you offer, you do four different ones. So the first one is diet power, then you have health power, which is a lot of the hormones and detoxification, brain power and fit power. Um, so I was lucky enough to be able to do all of them and really get 
at great insights. So I definitely want to start with diet power because that's what a lot of people who listen to this are interested in is like the nutrition. Um, so I have my results listed and in front of me and I'm sure you do as well. So if you have, like when you look at my results right now, and there's quite a few things that you tested for, um, like I can read out some of them. So like carbohydrate, insulin, my, like how I react to different, uh, cholesterol, dietary, unsaturated fat, dietary, saturated fat, um, protein need, protein weight response, body mass index. I mean, it's very interesting stuff. So looking at these, what really sticks out to you? Great. And I'll, and I'm going to actually just pause one moment and take a step back and just ask. Um, so Brittany, was it difficult to do the DNA test? Cause people are often curious, how did you get this? And, um, no, it was not difficult at all. Um, it's very straightforward. It's a saliva test and, I, yeah, no, not yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's super it easy. So, easy. so to get these results, we didn't have to send you to a doctor or get blood or anything else. Yeah, it's just a simple home. cheek swab. And then from yeah. that, it goes to, we've got just an outstanding uh, Canadian lab, um, does testing for lots of the hospitals and things in Canada as well. And then we produce these results. And when you get the results, you're saying, <clears throat> we set it up very simply green and red. So you get a dashboard and where you're over 50% red are the areas you should be uh, paying attention to. And you should, you know, again, just saying everybody has at least a third of it is red. Um, and I told you, you've actually got really quite good genes. They, you know, there's a lot of areas that looked uh, very strong, but we had some really clear messages here too. So the first thing in the diet power report that we look at is diet management. And so in here, as you just mentioned, we're looking at carbs, fats, proteins, and other things. And the areas that we see on your report that are very red <clears throat> are dietary saturated fat and protein need. <clears throat> and what that means is that in general, it's, you have some genes that don't break down saturated fat as well. And on protein need, your body doesn't access all of the protein quite as well as it should. And so you're better off having more frequent uh, protein throughout the day in smaller portions and more um, biologically accessible, easier to break down protein, just to be sure your, body, your body gets what it needs. So when we look at that, really the simple messages out of it are, you know, you're pretty good on a balanced diet. You should have a little bit more protein, but make sure it's good, clean sources and just watch your saturated fat. And as you saw in your report, Brittany, we actually have a page that's called your action plan and the recommendations. And so it actually sets out some specific things. So for dietary saturated fat, you, you're given some action suggestions, which is avoid eating a diet high in saturated fats and focus instead on healthier unsaturated fats, such as flaxseed oil, hemp seeds, leafy greens, walnuts, chia, chia seeds, probably reduce dairy and fatty meats and avoid processed foods because they have a higher likelihood of contributing to weight gain, focus on eating a balanced, healthy diet and exercising regularly. So that's just an example of what some of the recommendations are then that Brittany and what you received in terms of looking at that. So yes, yeah, so your first things are we look at kind of the, the macronutrients um, and you know that was the messages that we had for you there. Yeah, absolutely. So I find it interesting that you test for protein weight response um, right underneath protein need in my report, yes. which I am fully green in. So I'm just curious, like, why do you test for protein weight response and not like carbohydrate weight response or like what, what does that really mean? Right. So that one we test for very specifically because we work with so many bodybuilders. So we have a lot of people who are athletes and bodybuilders and have gone on to who were on high protein diets and could not understand why they were putting on weight. And so there is actually a specific gene that is related to whether when you eat too much protein, whether it converts it to putting on weight. And so that was actually an essential uh, gene that we know about and that there's solid research on that we could include so that people who are trying to understand that will know whether they actually have to be a little bit careful about how they what types of proteins they have and how they manage it. And there isn't a gene we know about, you know, carbohydrate weight response. It's not quite as simple. So this was mm -hmm. just one, a gene that had good information that we could report on. So it's, it's a cool one. We have a lot of right. athletes that really rely on that. Right. So does that mean that because I'm fully green with those genes or gene, 
does that mean that if I eat a diet high in protein, then it will help manage my weight or will it be that I'll Correct. gain weight? No, okay. you will. It's, if it's okay. green, it's good. You are good. Okay. You can manage eating a lot of protein. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good to know because my protein need is lower and I need more protein. So it's good that those kind of go well together. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the food intolerances or intolerances are very interesting. So you test for alcohol, caffeine, gluten, lactose, salt, and sugar craving. Yes. And so it was interesting, of course, to see your results there. So you would be typical. Your your lactose results came out 75% red. And so, and it's interesting because we talked about the fact that you've pulled most, you know, a lot of dairy out of your diet. And, um, you know, you had in the past some different health uh, challenges. Lactose, you know, very likely could have been a contributing factor. Mm-hmm. And, and again, remembering that the younger you are, the more your body just manages anything you can throw at it. But what we really see is people who've got weakness in this gene, it really starts to show up as you hit uh, 40. And we've worked with a lot of people, uh, you know, some athletes who uh, who would be having, you know, terrible knee problems and joint problems and going to physio for years, got their results, discovered that they lactose was a problem, pulled that out of their diet. And suddenly these years of um, inflammation in their joints went away. And for others then who have had who put weight on because it just doesn't break down that well, as soon as they reduced this or pulled it out of their diet, we're doing so, so much better. And so, you know, that was a piece of information you've learned. Um, and then the other one that showed up for you, and I know you're a coffee lover, is that you're 50-50 on caffeine. And that just kind of means be careful about this, the second, third, and fourth cup of coffee. One, no problem, but it doesn't break down all that well for you. And so you just want to be careful about having too many cups in a day or it's likely to overstimulate you. Mm-hmm. I actually just purchased a um, mushroom like fake coffee blend this morning after looking at these results. <laughs> well, that's an amazing thing to be happy. The mushroom coffee is actually fabulous. Yes. Such a yes. great thing to yes. incorporate into the, into the diet. Yeah. Um, I, I will co- comment about the other one here, gluten, because we know there's so many people that are having um, stomach issues and uh, gluten issues. And it's really only about 15 to 25% of the population, closer to 15, that truly have genes related to uh, problems with gluten. Um, a lot of our issues with gluten in our society are acquired uh, because our we genetically modified our grains in North America, which upped the gluten content by two to five times. And so when we are eating you know, processed foods or breads and things here, we're getting a much higher gluten hit than we used to in the past. And because of so much processed food, it's weakened the lining of our of our um, our gut. And as a result, we just it once it becomes inflamed and and leaky, it, you just continue to have problems. It can be difficult for a while. Mm-hmm. So many people who aren't even all that rad on this one need to sometimes pull that out of their diet for a period of time just to allow the gut lining to heal. So uh, you know, again, it's just a way in your case of showing that. You don't genetically have issues in this area, but it doesn't preclude you from having developed some problems. Yeah, absolutely. I don't really eat gluten anyway um, prior to this, but it's definitely interesting to know. So just going back to the lactose quickly. So because I am 75% red with these genes, does that technically like classify me as lactose intolerant? Those, they are actually, they're slightly different things. So you, you know, we're always clear on saying you have a predisposition and you have, you have genes that do, that are not designed to break down lactose easily. And so it doesn't, if you have um, milk or dairy products that have their own bacteria in them, or you have a really strong gut, that means you can probably process it. And it won't mean that you're intolerant. You have a likelihood to, uh, to intolerance. And you have a likelihood to allergy, but it, they're not they're not conclusive. They are correlated, but not conclusive. I, I, you know, hopefully that makes sense. It means because our bodies are smart and they try to work around whatever we give to them. But the odds of you with this result are that you are more likely to be intolerant and you just have to m- monitor it. And you need very good gut bacteria and support in order to process the lactose in your in your gut if you take it in because your genes won't be able to do the job properly for you. Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's what I figured. Um, 
and it's just good to like understand that and know that moving forward. Mm -hmm. So the next section on the diet one is food taste and preference. Um, you know, there's quite a bit here. It's, it's a, it's a fun section more than anything. It's, it's interesting to know, isn't it, that there are genes that tell you whether you might have a preference for caffeine or carbs or fats or proteins. And so we just put that out there in in Mark in part, because sometimes it tells you why you like or don't like certain things. And and it includes bitter taste, salt, sweet, and uh, smoking behavior. And so this is really more of a fun area just to say, this is maybe why you like or don't like certain things. For example, bitter taste, it's fully, you're fully green, which means you taste normally. People who are fully red and fully in bitter taste don't taste bitter that much. So tend to like really dark chocolates and, and strong green vegetables and beers because they can't taste it that much versus for others that might not like it as well, just because it, it's just too strong for them. Right. I think it's interesting that you also test for smoking behavior, like your ability to respond normally to nicotine. And I'm 50, 50 on that. Now, of course, like I don't smoke. Um, but does that gene at all relate to other smoking? Like if you're smoking weed or anything like that, or is that just like completely different? Do you know what, what are, I, I, um, it's related to nicotine primarily, uh, but it's a really good thing to go and check whether, uh, um, there might it might have a link into other sorts of things, whether you're smoking marijuana or or, or that. Um, but it's really around nicotine. So in this particular one, if you start smoking, you're likely to smoke a lot more than other people, just because your gene really responds to it and craves it. Huh, that's so interesting. I'm so glad I never started. <laughs> mm-hmm, exactly. <laughs> Um, okay. And then vitamins and supplements. So of course you test for quite a few here. We don't have to go through all of them, but what did you get? What were your main takeaways from this? Well, your genes are actually really strong here. This is, um, you have just one area on vitamin B6, which links and supports B9, B12, et cetera, for your energy. And so we talked about for you, it's not a bad idea at any point if you're feeling your energy decrease or you're just doing a lot to do, you know, perhaps a complex B. We see a lot of people with weaknesses in their, um, in their Bs. And this was really the clue for me to changing my health. Um, And we see other areas where people are weak. And the thing that's really important for people to know um, is that our food supply in general is quite weak now. We just are not getting the nutrients out of it that we did, you know, 20, 30 and 40 years ago. Even in pure organic food, the, the soils don't quite have the resilience that they did in the past. Love seeing so many people building home gardens now during, you know, this lockdown we had this last while. It's just so important to be getting high nutrient, high quality food. And that's always the most bioavailable to our bodies. However, being in the age that we're in, I'm a big advocate now of everybody taking a multivitamin and an omega uh, three and just getting and, and a D given we live in Vancouver. It's just as good support for our body. Plus, we use this and say, where might you need some additional? And in your case, you probably need a little bit of extra B support at times just to be sure your body is managing the nutrients as well as it could to metabolize everything that um, that you're eating in your diet. Yeah, absolutely. And I've been taking a methylated B complex on and, on and off for probably like 10 years at this point. Um, or like five years, something like that. Um, and notice a difference. Like I definitely notice a difference in energy and mood and like all of those types of things. So yeah, it's cool to kind of see how it all really relates on a cellular uh, or genetic level. And B is a really good one to watch out for because even though your genes are pretty good in this area, other than the B6, um, stress will burn your bees down and then you start yeah. using up your adrenals and it really can be very, very hard on the body. So when your bees run low and we're not getting as much through our food as we, as we could, uh, then your body's going to feel the impact. The other thing is almost all women as they hit perimenopause should be starting to take bees. We just don't produce it as well. And so any women, um, you know, I usually say about age 45 or 50 and over should definitely be taking a complex vitamin B. And you just mentioned methylated for anybody who's methylated just means it makes it, it, it's, there's a methyl component that makes it more accessible for your body and it just breaks down more easily. So, you know, look for the methyl uh, bees when you're, when you're in the health food store, it just makes it more accessible. And 
I, we, we also talked about the fact that it can take two to four weeks to notice a difference. Bees take a while to work through the body. Um, and when you stop taking them, you'll feel good for a while. And then two to three weeks later, you start feeling tired again. It's just the way the bees work through in a cycle in your body. So remember, when you try it, you need to be consistent for one month minimum on your vitamins to start to see and, and notice. And remember, it's all often subtle. Oh, do I have a little bit more energy? So just be really conscious of that. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, there's no point in taking something for a week and expecting to have re results right away. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So I'd love to switch to health power, um, which is basically kind of like what we were just talking about with methylation and a few other things. So the first section here is detoxification. And I find this very interesting because I love detoxing already as a biohacker. It is a big part of what I do um, in terms of like the sauna and dry brushing and um, exercise and all of these different ways that you can detox. So it's interesting that I have some genes that actually show that I don't detox as optimally as I would like. You are so you're so right. And so the fact that you are doing those things, Brittany, are going to keep you super healthy. Um, it just means that your body needs a little bit more support in these areas in order to keep itself, you know, releasing all of the toxins that come in. So I just love when you describe that you're doing the dry brushing, the saunas, and I know you're eating healthy uh, because that will, you know, again, lots of, you know, greens and, and onions, garlic, turmeric, and things like that can all just be fantastic in keeping that um, anti, you know, the detoxification happening in the body. It's perfect. Right. So do any of these ones in this section or even in health power in general relate to aging and how fast you age? Well, interesting. I would suggest that um, all of them do in health power. So these are the health power is the underlying processes behind your diet that support your body. So we look at detoxification, hormone health, inflammation, and methylation. And methylation is just kind of how um, your body um, manage it's almost the engine of the cell and so yes all of these relate to aging and especially where your genes are weak that's where you're more likely to have problems so beautiful that you're doing this because we saw that your report was a bit redder in this area which means you need more of the background processes to be supported in order to see keep super healthy uh throughout your life so we you know detox is one yes if you don't detoxify you're going to build up all of these free radicals in your body. And that is absolutely what starts to create um, the aging process. It also, when these free radicals get out of control, that's what leads to chronic disease and cancers and other things. So for sure, detoxification is important. Um, so is inflammation. And so if we look at hormone and inflammation, you're a little bit red on both of those as well. And right. just to spend a moment on, on hormones, um, you know, we see so many women who are having trouble with their their hormone balance, and it's just, and that and it contributes to your your mood, to weight gain, to issues with pregnancy, difficulties with your periods. So, getting this working well for you is just essential. And so, diet, of course, is the starting point. But as we look at your results here, we can see that you have a bit more of an issue in terms of regulating the the um, hormones in your body. You're good at metabolizing them, but you're weaker on eliminating them. And mm -hmm. what that means is if you are getting additional hormones through your meats or your foods, or if you're on the pill or getting estrogen in other forms, your body's going to have troubles eliminating that. And you will end up with a buildup over time that is likely to result in some sort of a challenge. So mm -hmm. it's just really important um, if you have weakness in this area genetically to be keeping your body as clean as possible, just so it doesn't become a problem. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess like elimination of estrogen could relate to estrogen dominance, which I see a lot with my own clients and friends and family. Um, and it's interesting like that my genes aren't good with that, aren't, mm -hmm. like, aren't optimal. Exactly. And so again, it just highlights the importance of, mm -hmm. of, of supporting yourself in it. And again, you know, just to say, to take a step back, Brittany, that's the really great thing. When people see it literally in green and red, as you do in the report, it becomes the evidence that says, oh, this is why I have to keep doing this. Because sometimes it's hard to, to, to be disciplined around, 
you know, detoxifying or doing things or having a good diet regularly. But when you can see the evidence that, oh, this is how my body's set up, uh, there's a price to be paid over the long run if I'm not paying attention to this. Then, you know, we just find that people stick to their to the things that are important for their body when they understand that there is actually evidence for them specifically of why it's important. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Um, and then the inflammation response. So there's two different ones that you test for here. Yes. And so your inflammation is on kind of immune response and how things kind of in the day to day to day environment. And you have a, you have a slightly higher, um, immune response. So, you know, we talked a little bit around, you know, with COVID, um, that this is the sort of gene that can lead to a bit more of this cytokine, um, response. And so you want to be a wee bit careful and there's so many things we can do to protect our immunity. I'm, Honestly, we, we don't have to be worried about COVID if we're looking after our health because our bodies will respond as they should. In your case here, you just want to take good care on that. And the good news is you've got very strong tumor um, genes that really will help in terms of um, making sure that cancers don't kind of build up as, as long as you support the uh, detoxification of your body as well. Right. And then the last part is methylation, which we briefly um, discussed and, so methylation is yeah. something that's really shown up lately in, you know, more in, in, you know, wellness circles and in biohacking, not something that people would have thought a lot about, but it's really just how the, 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 the cells utilize the energy that's coming and, and process the, the nutrients that they have. And so when your methylation is weak, it just means you're not getting, your body gets a bit sluggish, your metabolism slows down and you just... Uh, it just doesn't work. You're not getting the value of the nutrients as well. It's a, got a big link to vitamin B and the efficiency of that in terms of managing your body. And so, again, it's just in your case here, some support on B12, you know, complex B and B12s is a good thing based on your results. Yes. Good. Um, I'm glad I'm taking those. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's switch to Fit Power. I know there's like quite a lot that we're going through, but it's just very interesting and kind of gives people a taste of what you can get tested. Um, so Fit Power, I think, was pretty good. Like I'm looking at it, I think, yeah, I think like you know, yesterday when we briefly spoke, you recommended that I respond better to endurance activity than to power activity. Yes. And so, you know, that's, again, you just get little clues of how you can exercise better. So the summary for you, Brittany, is in general, you will get your body is set up better for endurance versus a lot of power. Not that you can't and shouldn't do both. It's just that your, your body likes it and will probably respond better. You've got good ligament and tendon strength. Your muscle strength is a little bit redder, which means trying to build up to become a big power athlete would be a take a lot more work on your behalf, but you recover your muscles well. We see that your energy availability is um, you're a type of person that does better when you have uh, some food just before eating because it makes it more available for you, but you metabolize well, your blood pressure naturally genetically looks good, your oxygen uptake looks good, you have good blood sugar and insulin response, and I'm not worried about you in terms of stroke or cardiovascular risk, your genes are really quite normal in those areas. So those are the things that we look at and it just helps if you're doing a training program or a personal trainer to make sure that you're gearing your program to support your clients the best you can. Right. And so for the blood sugar and insulin gene, do you, so I'm sure you've had some diabetics come and do this test and does it like indicate for them that this is an issue? Like, is there, I'm sure there's gotta be a correlation going on there. Yes, you'll see that we have both <clears throat> blood sugar and insulin here. We also have insulin in the uh, diet test, and there's a link into carbohydrates and the cholesterol. So there's kind of a link between several of them, and there's absolutely people that we we regularly see where we say, you need to be careful. Does stroke run in your family? Yes, you need to be careful about stroke. Or we discover that they've got a set of genes <clears throat> that that clog the arteries, um, and leads to a higher risk uh, through cholesterols and then uh, uh, on another, or we see insulin challenges. So they have to watch for the diabetes and the, and the blood sugar um, spikes. So definitely in all of these areas, when we see it in the results, we can show people, yes, you have the genes. You do need to take greater care and attention in these areas. For you, you're really clear and good on all of that. That's great. That's awesome. 
Um, and then the last one was brain power. And this was actually my favorite test out of the four. Um, like I find all the data very useful and interesting, but for some reason, I think because this is so clearly related to illnesses and diseases, um, I found it so interesting to see like how likely my genes would respond um, if something like this were to sort like sort of develop. So you test for Alzheimer's, concussion, cortisol, depression, emotional eating, and Parkinson's. Right. And we picked these up because these were areas we just had a lot of requests from our clients in. Um, in general, we don't move as much into the medical space because we believe that if you look after all of the diet, you will help solve the other problems. But the Alzheimer's one, we're discovering again that Alzheimer's is really kind of diabetes type three because it's very much related to placking instead of in the arteries in the brain. And so when we see a certain uh, gene combination, it's just a really good way of letting people know that you can change your diet and your exercise and other things to make sure that this doesn't become a problem for you. And Alzheimer's and concussion genes are very closely related. So these, I discovered that my children have issues in these areas. So we pulled them out of contact sports to try to reduce their result, their, their in likelihood of concussion just to keep them safer. So these are really good areas just to, to learn about. Um, and, you know, in yours, your results actually came back very good. You were a little bit higher on cortisol and you had, you know, talked at one point about having some adrenal uh, fatigue issues in the past. And so, you know, these are just watch areas for you and uh, otherwise, you know, really quite good results. Right. Yeah. I, I find it very interesting. Um, and then emotional eating showed up for me for 50, 50, which is so bizarre because I find when I get, uh, emotional, whatever that is, like if I'm upset or angry, um, I actually don't want to eat at all. Like I really like sustain from eating. So I was so surprised to see that. And some of that, you know, and again, when you're 50, 50, that's why I didn't flag it particularly for you because it, yeah. it, it can go either way. And so for you, you've got, you know, a split on the genes on that one. And so hopefully your good ones take over. And if you're already eating healthy, you'll find that, um, you know, you, you, that you, that you crave more of healthy food. Your, your body actually takes about 10 to 12 days of eating a certain food to suddenly prefer that food. And so, you know, I guess that would be consolation for anyone trying to shift your diet is you just got to stick with it for one to two weeks. And then suddenly yeah. you will start to crave more of the type of food that you've been eating. So the good news is for you that you don't turn to junk food <laughs> when yeah. you're not, when you're feeling more emotional. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, well, thank you so much for like going through that. That was like so in depth and I learned so much about myself. I really did. And like, that's the best part about doing this is it's just data that you can now use and benefit from. So it's just like everyone should do this test. <laughs> Right. It's, it's really fun to do, you know, and you can learn some great stuff. And it's just so it, the great thing about it is you only do it once. And then you've got this data and it applies for your lifetime because it's all the way back at your blueprint. And so this is your blueprint. And how are you using putting the building blocks on it? And what you want to do is be building carefully on the places where that your, your genes are a bit weaker. And so instead of having to build for everything, you know, like a complete brick structure, you can really just try and build that heavy protection around the areas where your genes need that support. Absolutely. Yeah. And for all the listeners, I, they, DNA Power actually gave me a, um, what's it called? Discount code and it's biohacking Brittany. So if you would like to do this test, please use that. I think it's for about $50 off and which is great and definitely, definitely use it and try this out and let me know if you, you know, what you find from it, screenshot it, DM me, whatever. We can definitely talk about it. I'm here to help. And I think I'm going to actually be bringing this into my practice with my clients because like I said, like this information is so useful. And for me as a nutritionist with my clients, like I can look at all of this and really like tailor my plans and my protocols to really help level up their health in a much, much deeper way than I previously could. So yeah, thank you again for coming on. Like this was just fantastic. Terrific. Really enjoyed it, Brittany. It's always so fun to go through this information and results with people. And uh, our goal is a happier, healthier world. And, you know, I think we do it. Uh, we do it for ourselves first and, you know, one person at a time. Absolutely. So where can people connect with you if they want to order a test? What do you recommend? 
Well, I recommend, so our, if you want to learn more, you can go to our site, uh, dnapower.com. And Brittany has a link where if you want to get a discount off of uh, doing the total power test, which is all of the stuff that we covered with Brittany here today, you can receive it there. It does include a consult to make sure that you're getting um, information either through Brittany or with us in terms of making sure you understand your results and get the most from them. Um, and it's just, it's, it's, you know, as we said, just such a foundational piece of information to have about maintaining your health. And I truly believe that we can live to 100 plus in a healthy, beautiful, wonderful way. And this is part of the piece of the information that can help you do that. Absolutely. Yeah. So I will link all of that in the show notes for everybody. And I'm excited to see people do it and really get this going for them. So yeah, thank you again. Terrific. Have a great day and uh, all the best to you and all your listeners. Thanks. Thank you so much for tuning in today. As always, feel free to screenshot this episode and tag me if you'd like me to respond. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you have a question about your health, my DMs are always open and I'm currently taking new clients. Thanks and see you next time.